And now, stay tuned for the program that has rated tops in popularity for a longer period of time than any other West Coast program in radio history. The Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline, invites you to sit back and enjoy another strange story by The Whistler. I am The Whistler, and I know many things. For I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now for the Signal Oil Company, the Whistler's strange story. A matter of time. With Russ Logan, time was of the essence. He'd always been a most meticulous man. Minutes meant money, and appointments to his way of thinking were made to be kept. Through the years, you've become even more so, haven't you, Russ? You're careful, almost calculating, and certainly ever alert for opportunities. Despite the kidding you've taken from your business partner, Jim Kendrick, and even your wife, Jean, precision and time in all matters have remained almost an obsession. Tonight, riding with Gene and Kendrick in his big chauffeur-driven car, you sit very quietly, grimly amused that a matter of carefully planned minutes will mean another opportunity to you. And a thin smile of anticipation crosses your lips as the car swings in the winding drive of Jim Kendrick's home in Coldwater Canyon. Russ, D., you're awfully quiet. Restaurant food disagree with you? Russ, your wife's talking to you. Uh, oh, uh... Sorry, Jim. Penny, for your thoughts. <laughs> I think you've been dreaming about everything we've been saying. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe if we get on to the subject of nightcap. How about it? <laughs> Sounds good to me, Jim. You see, Gene, we've hit on a something that interests your lord and master. A nightcap will pick us all up. Sure. Oh, stop right here, Nick. Yes, sir. Oh. Yeah, let me give you a hand now. <sighs> hey. You can put the car in the garage, Nick. Mr. and Mrs. Logan have their own car. All right, Mr. Kendrick. Well, come on, folks. Now, you see, Russ is looking at his watch again. Afraid you'll miss an appointment in the morning, darling? What's the matter? Russ, with all your clock watching, you'd think you weren't a member of the firm. <laughs> Jim, I keep telling you, you ought to rig up a time clock for Russ. Let him punch in every morning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> You don't mind the kidding, do you, Russ? Not in the least. And you've a reason for glancing at your watch. The seconds are counting again, aren't they? In your life, and more particularly in your partner, Jim Kendricks. If he only knew what was about to happen, he'd be watching every moment, too. You're all inside the house now, and you have only to wait until you hear Nick, the chauffeur, come in the back door to enter his room. Then you can set your plan in motion. But something unexpected happened. I got a little surprise for you folks. Some fine old Napoleon brandy. Oh? Let's see now. Oh, yes, I've got it locked up in the den. Wait right here, I'll get uh, it. Oh, uh, wait a minute, Jim, I... Uh... Yes, Russ? Uh, nothing. Uh, it was just something I was going to ask you. Go ahead, ask me. Oh, uh, never mind. It'll keep till tomorrow. Okay, I'll go get the brandy. Oh, oh Jim! Jim! Jim, what happened? Oh. In the den. He's still there. Get him. But, Jim, you've been hit. Get him, I said. Go after him, Russ. I'll take care of him, Russ. Here, Jim, lie down on the den and for you. I'll call a doctor. Hurry up, Russ. He went out the French windows. Don't just stand there. Where do you keep that gun you have? In the desk in the den. Will you hurry up? Sure, sure. Jane, you call the police. I'll get him, Jim. Don't worry. <laughs> It's infuriating, isn't it, Russ, that everything had to be spoiled by a simple break in the routine. Jim's surprise, the bottle of Napoleon brandy. 
It sent him into the den before you wanted your plan to go into effect. Before Nick, the chauffeur, had time to get inside the house to his room. And now, racing around the side of the house, you hope that Nick hasn't caught the killer. You're furious that things didn't go according to schedule. And now you can only hope as you rush to the spot far back on the property where you're to meet the man who fired on Jim Kendrick. You promised him you'll hide him away, haven't you, Russ? Yes, that's what you promised. But actually, you're going to use the gun in your hand and put him away forever. At the designated spot near a huge pepper tree, you wait. Listen for his footsteps. Raise the gun and aim in the direction of the sound. And then... Mr. Logan? Mr. Logan? Nick! Oh, I, I think he's trapped, sir, up in the canyon. Mrs. Logan says the police are on their way. You're terrified now, aren't you, Russ? It's going all wrong. They'll capture the gunman and he'll talk, implicate you. When the police arrive, they close in around the canyon in back of Jim Kendrick's place. Nick stays close to you as you join the search. Finally, you hear the shouted words that you fear the most. Over here, everybody! We got him! We got the guy! Now a word about the chilly nights and mornings we've been having. To be sure your car will spring to life pronto when you touch the starter, you naturally want a gasoline that's engineered to help your engine perform efficiently. But how can you, Mr. or Mrs. Average Motorist, measure how efficiently your engine is running? Well, the easiest way is by the mileage you get, which explains why we're so proud of Signal's good mileage. Mileage that has made Signal known throughout the West, from Canada to Mexico, as the go-farther gasoline. After all, there's only one way Signal can give such good mileage, and that's by helping your engine run so efficiently you save gasoline. Save gasoline with quick starting. Save gasoline with smooth pickup. Save gasoline with full power. And, of course, the more gasoline you save, the more mileage you enjoy. So there you have it in a nutshell, friends. The reason why mileage is the best yardstick to measure gasoline efficiency and driving pleasure. The reason why so many smart motorists today are switching to Signal, the famous go farther gasoline. Well, Russ, you knew it. Everything was ruined the moment your neatly timed schedule was broken. A bottle of Napoleon brandy. If it hadn't been for that, Jim Kendrick wouldn't have entered the den quite so soon. There would have been time for Nick, his chauffeur, to have returned to the house. And the gunman you had hiding in the den would have had time to get away and reach the spot outside the house where he was to meet you without being seen by Nick. But it's gone wrong all the way. And now it seems the gunman has been caught. You haven't even a chance to run for it because of the presence of the police. Well, we've got him, Mr. Logan. Fine. Fast worker. Now, the chauffeur here got a good look at him when he ran out of the house. Says he can identify him. Is that the man there? That's him. How about it, Nick? Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What is it, Nick? He's not the guy. What? He's not the guy. Officer, he's not the one. You got the wrong man. You sure? Sure, I'm sure. I got a good look at him. Oh. Sorry, mister. You can go. Guess we made a mistake. All right, spread out, boys, and get going. We got the wrong guy. It's almost too good to be true, isn't it, Russ? That your gunman escaped. Somehow evaded Jim Kendrick's chauffeur, Nick, and the police. And for the moment, at least, you're in the clear again. But you're still worried, aren't you? Nick said he got a very good look at the gun. Maybe he'll realize soon that he's seen him before. And he might remember where. The little bar near your office. That's where you planned it all, isn't it, Russ? Yes. When the police leave and you're back inside Jim Kendrick's house, 
You learn from your wife that your partner's wounds are not serious. He's going to be all right, Russ. They took him to the hospital in the police ambulance, but the doctor said he wouldn't have to stay there long. Well, we better get on home, Jim. All right. As long as Jim's okay. Whoever did it got away, I guess. Yeah, yeah, he got away. Uh, you run on up to the apartment, Jean. I'll put the car away. Don't be long, dear. I won't. Thank you. What are you doing here? Where else would I go? What went wrong? I thought you said the I chauffeur... know what I said. Kendrick went in there sooner than I expected. I couldn't stop him. And that chauffeur saw me. I know he did. Yes, yes, he saw you. Gave the police a description, too. Look, you said you'd hide me out. I would have. Things had gone right, but I can't hide you in my apartment. I've got a wife, frankly. A wife who doesn't even know I'm mixed up in this. But the cops, they start working on the description that chauffeur gave him. It'll add up to Frankie Rizzo. Me? Take it easy. Well, that's all right for you to say. You... You got me into this, said there'd be nothing to it. A simple job. That's right. It would have been if you'd killed him. That's what you were paid to do. But let's get it. I thought you knew what you were doing. I thought I was hiring a professional. So, what do we do now? Maybe that's your problem. Oh. No, you're in this. You did the hiring. Well, I'll help you get out of town, that's all. I can't skip town. Not tonight. They'll be watching for me. The police. They'll have the airports covered every railroad station. Eh... Fine, miss. I wish you'd never picked me for this job. I wish you'd never even found me. I went to a great deal of trouble finding you, Frankie, a great deal. I've never known anyone in your business before. It took me quite a while. So what happens Don't now? Don't get excited, that's all. I'm not letting you spoil everything. Oh, yeah, get into my car. I'll drive you someplace. Where... I've got a pretty good hideout. There's a motel near the ocean. A motel? Good. I'll take you there. Wait in the car. I'll tell my wife you've gone someplace and that I have to take care of. You have to help him, don't you, Russ? Even though you're disgusted with the way he handled the shooting. You tell Jean that you've decided to pick up a carton of cigarettes. A few minutes later, you're driving out Wiltshire with Frankie Rizzo. He directs you to the Surfside Motel on the beach. You leave him there... Return to your own apartment. Answer Jean's sleepy inquiries with the alibi of a flat tire. When you finally turn in, there's little sleep for you, is there, Russ? You're tense and nervous, dreading the moment when you'll have to face your partner, Jim Kendrick, again. And that moment comes the following morning as you visit the hospital and stand at his bedside. Jim greets you with a curious smile on his lips. Hello, Russ. Nice of you to come. Good morning, Jim. How do you feel? Just fine. They tell me I'm going to live. Of course you are. Too bad, isn't it, Russ? What? Would have solved all your problems if I'd have kicked off, huh? Given you control of the business, too. What in the world are you talking about? That little deal you approached me with two weeks ago. Deal? Come off it, Russ. We disagreed, remember, on that little transaction which you thought our freight line would fit into so... Neatly. You want me to drive business away from now on? If it's crooked, yes. Even if it means 50,000 profit. I won't stand for our trucks accepting a contract to haul contraband. I told you two weeks ago. I'm telling you again now. As long as I'm a partner in this outfit, we're keeping it clean. Okay, okay, Jim. Forget it. I have. That's why I didn't know what you were talking about. The moment we disagreed, I dismissed it from my mind. Really? Of course. Funny. Maybe I misjudged you, Russ. I actually found myself wondering if that little shooting at the house didn't just have something to do with your plan. Well, that's too ridiculous to dignify with an argument. So we won't argue. The man who was in your study was obviously after the safe, not you. You just made the mistake of walking in there. I certainly didn't suggest it. No, you didn't. Matter of fact, you stopped me. Why, Russ? What was it you were going to ask me about at that time? I... I have no idea. No. No, I don't suppose you have. All right, we won't settle anything this way. Maybe when the 
police picked this guy up. I wish they had him right now. I certainly don't like any feeling of mistrust between us. Jim, it isn't good for business. No, it, it isn't. Uh, Nick, my chauffeur, thinks he's seen this man before. I mean, before last night. Oh. Might give the police a lead, huh? Might, Russ. It just might. He you say where he'd seen him? Yeah, yeah, down at the gym Nick goes to. It's the same guy. He's a cheap gambler named Rico or Reno, something like that. Kind that just might take a pot shot at somebody for money, provided the right sort of person talked him into it. Assured him it would be an easy setup, no danger. Well, Nick ought to tell the police about all this. Oh, he has. Yeah, Nick stole the police. Good boy, Nick. Very loyal. Well, sit down, Russ. Sit down. Visit a while. Yes. Sure, Jim. Sure. You struggle to control the nervousness, the fear that builds within you, don't you, Russ? Try to chat casually with Jim about the business during the next few minutes. He knows, doesn't he, Russ? Yes, you're certain Jim knows you hired someone to kill him. You're glad when your visit comes to an end. You hurry out of the hospital and back to your office. Then that afternoon, there's a phone call for you. Hello, Logan speaking. Hello, pal. Look, this place is giving me the willies. I want to get out of town. You didn't listen to me last night. Okay, okay, so now I'm taking your advice. Uh, look, Frankie, uh, I'd rather talk this open first. Now, be out there in about a half an hour, okay? Okay. Logan, ten grand ought to make a nice start. Ten grand? Now, wait a minute. Sure, I know. Five grand was all you promised, but the price has just gone up. But you made a deal. Since then, I decided to retire. And a guy who retires has got to have capital and an income. You're it, pal. Or else. Or else what? Well, Jim Kendricks might like to know who wanted to have him knocked off and why. Well, what do you say? All right, thank you. I'll pick you up here as soon as it gets dark. After you leave, Frankie, you return to your office, sit for nearly an hour thinking things out, and finally you reach a decision. By the time you arrive at your apartment, you know exactly what you're going to do. Jane! I'm in the bedroom, Ross. Oh, Mary, aren't you, darling? Yeah. You going out? Uh-huh. Sal and I are going over to Westwood to a cocktail party with Taylor. Oh, uh, mind fixing your own drink, Russ? I'm rushing. I think I'll skip a cocktail. Oh. Headache? No, sort of. Short enough to fix it. Oh, oh, darling, before you get yourself comfortable, do you mind doing something for me? Run down to Sal's apartment. What for? Well, she's loaning me a pair of stockings to match my new dress. I, I couldn't get the shade I wanted. Okay, I'll, I'll get it. Oh, uh, Jean. Yes? How, uh, uh, how long are you going to be gone? Oh, I don't know. A couple of hours. Well, you haven't forgotten we're going to the Andersons for dinner tonight. They're expecting us at 8, and I don't... You don't want to be late. I know. I'll be back by 7.30 or so. Well, never mind the or so. Make it 7.30 sharp. I'll meet you down the lobby. <laughs> You're pleased that Jean will be out of the apartment for two hours, aren't you, Russ? But you've still something else to solve. The little item of how you're going to leave the building without being seen. It comes to you when you reach Stella's apartment, two floors below. Yes. Standing in her living room, looking out over the rear gardens, everything falls neatly into place in your mind. Her sunroom window opens on the rear fire escape. Stella lives alone. And since she'll be at the cocktail party with your wife, her apartment will be empty. You chat with Stella for a few moments. Then as you leave her apartment, you slip the catch on the lock of her door. You know that she might check it as she leaves, but you have to take that chance. You hurry back upstairs. Here you are, Jean. Oh, thanks, darling. Is Stella waiting? She's all ready. Just finished putting on her face. Oh, dear. Go on, say it. I'm never on time. <laughs> it's your party this time. Just don't be late for the dinner. I won't. 
I think I'll stretch out for a while. All right, darling. I'll be on my way. Oh, uh, Jean. Yes? On your way out with Stella. Tell the clerk downstairs I don't want to be disturbed. There are no phone calls. I'll tell him, darling. <laughs> You pretend to drop off to sleep. Five minutes later, Jean leaves you alone in the apartment. You glance out the bedroom window. It'll be dark in another half hour, won't it, Russ? Dark enough to cover your movement down the back fire escape, through the garden. It's 6.55 exactly when you again slip into Stella's apartment. Hurry down the fire escape and then to your car parked in the street. Ten minutes later, you arrive at the Surfside Motel. You're thankful for the roar of the nearby surf as it will help cover the sound of gunfire. Yes, yeah, who is it? Open up, Frankie. Ah, hello, Russ. You got the money? No. I don't have the money, Frankie. Huh? Look, I thought I was going to take a little trip. You are going on a trip. A long trip. Hey, what's the idea of the rod? Rod? Oh. The idea of the rod, Frankie, is this. As Frankie Rizzo crumbles to the floor, you whirl and race back to your car parked in the alley. You're about to pull away when a police car stops in front of the motel. Two officers get out, followed by Nick, Jim's chauffeur. You watch as they stroll toward the motel office. Then when they're out of sight... A lucky break, wasn't it, Russ? If you'd been only a minute later, they'd have caught you. But now you're in the clear, racing back to your own apartment. It's 25 minutes after 7 when you slip back into the building through Stella's apartment. You sprint upstairs to your own floor, take the elevator from there to the lobby. Chat for a moment with a desk clerk until Jean arrives. Oh, I'm sorry, darling, but really I'm only a few minutes late. See what I mean, Fred? <laughs> Women. Never on time. Oh, I know I'm late, dear. That's why Stella let me out in front. Hey, don't be too hard on Mrs. Logan, sir. It's only 7.32. Why, if it was my wife, well, she always does... Excuse me. Uh-huh. I'm Lieutenant West from Homicide. I'm looking for a Mr. Logan. Russ Logan. Mr. Logan? Why, I'm you... Logan. What is it, Lieutenant? I'd like to ask you a few questions, if you don't mind. Sure. In private. Let's go up to my apartment. Uh, do you mind if my wife... Uh, no, no. Come along, Mr. Logan. I'll run into the elevator. Uh, what's this all about, Lieutenant? The girl seems to be questioning me, Mr. Logan. Where were you this evening between 7 and 7.30? In my apartment. Came home this afternoon around 5. My wife and I were just about to leave the building in New York in. I see. You were here then to 5? The desk clerk will verify that. Only way out of it then you see it a lot. Of course, there's always the fire escape. Well, our apartment and the fire escape are on the front of the building. I could hardly leave the building that way without being seen. See here, I... I mean, she's coming, Nothing to get worried about, Mr. Logan. As I said, it's just routine. We have to follow up all leads. Leads. In, in regards to what? Murder. Murder? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. We've been checking on a man named Frank Rizzo. Your partner's chauffeur, Nick Demas, thought Rizzo was the man who took a shot at his boss. I still don't see where they... We checked all of Rizzo's old hideouts. The Surfside Motel was one of them. Only when we got there, he'd been shot. Well, shouldn't you be discussing this with my partner? Rizzo had your phone number scribbled on a piece of paper, both your home and office. That's why we came here first, Mr. Logan. Going out, Mr. Logan? Oh, yes. Lieutenant, this is ridiculous. I was in my apartment all afternoon since 5 o'clock. You can check with the desk clerk and the elevator boy. That's right, officer. I just took Mr. Logan down a little while ago. Yes, sir. Uh, this way, our apartment is just... Um, uh, I don't think I'll hold you any longer, Mr. Logan. Very well, Lieutenant. Uh, I'm sorry I threw up the handle that way, but... Uh, well, as long as we're up here, how about having a drink? Oh, thanks. But if you don't mind, I would like to use your phone. I want to put in a call to headquarters. Then I'll be on my way. Don't mind at all, Lieutenant. Come here. <laughs> The 
cheapest automobile battery you can buy is the battery that costs the least per month. And when it comes to low cost per month, none can beat the new Signal Deluxe battery. The extra long life battery guaranteed a full 30 months on a service basis. One reason Signal Deluxe batteries deliver trouble-free service for such a long time is their microporous all-rubber separator, which have been called the greatest battery improvement in 20 years because they permit freer flow of acid between the plates, yet are not affected by the action of the acid. These unique plates help Signal Deluxe batteries deliver up to 35% more power to take care of the many electrical gadgets on today's cars. Also, you don't need to add water as often to the new Signal Deluxe battery because of the improved design all-rubber case. What more could a battery buyer ask, unless it's a generous trade-in allowance for his old battery, which Signal dealers are now giving, or convenient credit terms, which are available. So, any way you look at it, you'll find your best battery buy at a Signal service station. It's a long, long life battery that guarantees you low cost per month. The new Signal Deluxe Battery. You've answered the lieutenant's questions, and he seems satisfied with your story, doesn't he, Doctor? That you were in your apartment between 7 and 7.30, at the time when Frankie Rizzo was shot to death in Santa Monica. Yes, you're certain you're in the clear now, as you, your wife, Jean, and the lieutenant walk down the corridor to your apartment door. Come on in, Lieutenant. Why, Russ, that sounds like the electric alarm clock in the bedroom. The, the alarm? I said it before I left. I was afraid you'd oversleep, but I know how fussy you are about being late. Uh, I'll turn it on. Just a minute, Mr. Logan, I'll do that. I've got it, Lieutenant. I'll take it. If you don't mind. Hmm. I thought you said you were here in your apartment between 7 and 7.30, Mr. Logan. Why, I guess. This electric alarm clock was set for 7 o'clock. It's been ringing ever since. Right. Well, how do you explain it, Mr. Logan? Why, I... Look, Lieutenant... I can explain it, Logan, because you weren't here to turn it off. Now, wait a minute. I told you... I think I... you better come down to headquarters after all. A hand paraffin test will tell us if you fired a gun recently. And if you have, we've found our man. Let that whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil Program, The Whistler, each Sunday night at the same time. Meantime, Signal Oil Company and the friendly independent dealers who help you go farther with Signal Gasoline hope you'll remember. Regardless of what gasoline you use, you'll enjoy more miles of happy driving if you drive at sensible speed, obey traffic regulations, and avoid taking chances. You may even save a life, possibly your own. Featured in tonight's story were Bill Foreman as the Whistler, Ted DeCorsia, Margaret Brayton, Ed Begley, Raymond Burr, Herbert Litton, and Bill Boucher. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen, with story by Adrian John Doe, music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transmitted overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. The Whistler is entirely fictional, and all characters portrayed on The Whistler are also fictional. Any similarity of names or resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Remember to tune in at this same time next Sunday when the Signal Oil Company will bring you another strange story by the Whistler. Marvin Miller speaking for the Signal Oil Company. Stay tuned now for our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden, which follows immediately over most of these states. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>